So we have uh, two boys. Um, our oldest son is Harrison, and he's 14 years old. He's a freshman in high school. And then our younger son, Sawyer, uh, has Dravet syndrome, and he is 11 and a half. And Sawyer also has a service dog, Cherry, so she's now happily part of our family, too. Yes. So Sawyer's first seizure happened um, right before he turned seven months old. Um, he was taking a nap. Uh, midday he woke up from his nap uh, late afternoon probably around four o'clock and when i took him out of his crib um, he kind of went limp but it was uh, on one side of his body and he was smiling at me and like kind of laughing but i could tell something was wrong because he wasn't fully responding um, i didn't know what was happening but i knew something was wrong um, and this went on for at least 12 it was between 12 and 15 minutes we went to Bryn Mawr a Hospital Emergency Room. I think at that point you had met me there. Yep, I met you. I got a call and I remember when Alexis called me, she said, you know, something's just not right. And she's like, I think he had a seizure, but you know, she had never seen a seizure. I had never seen a seizure before. It also didn't look like what we thought it was going to look like. Of course, by then the seizure had stopped and all the doctors looked at us like, you have this, you know, child that looks totally normal. Um, maybe you just saw something weird and wasn't sure whether we were, you know, knew what we were talking about because we didn't know what we were talking about at that point. Um, and then when um, they laid him down and did his uh, full checkup, it, he went into another seizure. And this was a full tonic clonic, like very violent seizure. He was foaming at the mouth. He was completely unconscious, and it was extremely scary. Um, and again, it went on for a while, and they ended up having to stop it with medication. I think they gave him out of or Versed. I don't even remember. Um, so at that point, we were admitted into the hospital. Um, they gave him a full workup, and um, they wanted to, you know, see if if, if they could find something. Um, the only thing they came up with at that point was they said, you know, we we think he needs tubes in his ears because uh, both of his ears were fully full of fluid. Um, they but said, he had given no indication of that yeah. before. He, so. he wasn't ill. He hadn't had a cold. Um, so we were kind of shocked. Um, they said his ears are completely occluded. So perhaps that's why he had a seizure. Um, and it was, you know, at the time they said, we think it's probably just febrile. It's febrile. Don't worry about it. And uh, go get tubes. And they put tubes in his ears. And we crossed our fingers and, you know, went on with our life. Well, six days later, he had another seizure, though. And then that happens. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't get to the diagnosis. Now, this was, he was born in 2010. So, I mean, it's, we've come so far since then. So even then, at the time, we did start with a neurologist, um, actually at Nemours, and he was wonderful. He was not an epileptologist. And for a year and a half or more, we were told, Sawyer's gonna grow out of this. This is just febrile. There's no reason for this. He's gonna grow out of it. And that's all we were told. He was put on Keppra. Um, he was on Keppra for over a year. After his second seizure, which I think I just said was six days uh, later, we didn't see a huge change in him. He was still under a year old. You know, he was growing, he was developing. It was between six and nine months after the second seizure that we didn't have another. Um, so we, you know, kind of got more comfortable. Um, and just went about life. And then we, st we started to notice that he was starting to show some delays before he was two. So we started the earlier intervention process and he started getting some speech therapy. And when we started with our second neurologist who happened to be an epileptologist, um, she was the one who said, you know, I don't think this is run of the mill. I'm not really sure. So I think we should probably do some genetic testing just to see. So he didn't actually get a diagnosis. And at the time, genetic testing took at least three to four months to come back. Yeah. Uh, so he was two. He, it was May. He's, he turned two in April. Um, and we didn't get a diagnosis firmly until May. And we were, honestly, we were completely caught off guard. Like we were not yeah. expecting anything like that because nobody had told us anything like that. Um, Alexis was very good about looking for trying to get ahead of this 
And we had some friends of ours looking at him or teachers saying, you don't have to do anything special for him yet. Um, but we, we tried to get as much information and we put him in a special needs uh, program We were preschool. fortunate that our, our preschool we were already enrolled in for our older son had um, a special needs classroom. For us, it was life changing. It gave him a preschool experience from the age of um, two and a half up. And it was just a really important thing for him. Um, he wants to be, he wanted to be in school. He wanted to be with friends, with peers um, and experience that. And so that was really great. And it was our first taste of like early intervention, starting with therapies all the time. They didn't provide the therapies, but early intervention came in and would work with him for as much as he needed. Um, and from the beginning, once we enrolled him in birth to three, early intervention, and then for preschool three to five, he was getting a lot of services. Day to day, Sawyer is happy. Um, he likes to, you know, play outside with his dog. Um, he loves his, you know, his friends that he does have through school. He likes to talk about. Um, but from the Gervais perspective, um, you know, day to day, we can't leave Sawyer alone at all. He is extremely determined. If he wants to do something, he's going to do it. And he is an incredible problem solver. So, you know, I, he surprises me on a daily basis because there's so much, I mean, he has a lot of language and very much lets his <laughs> opinions and likes and dislikes um, be known. But I'm, always, I'm still to this day surprised with, I mean, and so are you, with things that he says. And he makes us laugh every single day because he says the most hilarious things. There's just so much going on in his head that he doesn't let out, but then all of a sudden he'll say something. Mm. And it's very obvious that, you know, he just knows way more than he lets on. So he is in public school, um, but he does spend the majority of, days of his day in special education, um, which I personally think is wonderful. Um, I do want him you know, pushed in and included for as much social time as that is possible and that he can handle um, successfully because he loves being with his peers and that is so important. But in terms of academics, um, he needs as much intervention as he can get. He has a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one full day, uh, mostly for the seizures, but also just because he needs that academically. It's a full-time job of advocating for him um, staying on top of IEP meetings, staying on top of he making sure he has everything he needs to be successful every day. Um, but the one thing I think that stresses both of us out on a daily basis is the unknown of the future. Right. Um, That's huge. I too. think Alexis, I try to tell myself that we can, we will prepare, we'll do everything uh, we can do now, whether it's preparing special needs trusts, whether it's preparing, you know, all the documentation. Uh, for you know what he needs in the future and to prepare ourselves for the future but the unknown of everything is you know and knowing a big that thing. he won't be able to be fully independent so how prepared will he really be will he actually learn to read will he be able to use money you know just where will he live will he always be living with us you kind of just take the good days and you say to yourself Let's just enjoy these days and not worry about the future. Who knows what the future is going to be? Let's not worry about that. But let's just enjoy every day. And yeah, that's we, definitely... we definitely along the way got to a point where we just we decided like we need to live our life. Like we need to be able to travel with him. We need to be able to do as much as we possibly can to give him as many, you know, n normal, wonderful activities. Do things as a family. We're lucky we have a lot of support around us, and and we have means to be able to go places and you know, show him the world and travel and do as much as we can.